Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today I'm going to demonstrate how you could create your own workspace in Photoshop. I'd like to thank my friend Noni Levinson for suggesting that I do this video. Now, if you create your own workspace in Photoshop, it will go a long way towards helping you work very effectively and efficiently in Photoshop. Photoshop comes with a number of workspaces built in. When you first start using it, you're going to be in what's called the Essentials Workspace. To get to the workspace, you could do it one of two ways. You could go to the far right hand side, click on this little drop down, and you could see we're in the Essentials workspace, and there's a number of others there as well. Another way to get to workspace is to go, is to go up to Window and then down to Workspace. And as I mentioned, by default, when you first start using Photoshop, you'll be in what's called the Essentials workspace, and it's got just I guess tools that Adobe feels people often use. But if you're a photographer, or if you're a painter, or if you're a graphics and web designer, or if you work in motion a lot with Photoshop, you may find that the Essentials Workspace isn't right for you. For example, I'm a photographer, and I would prefer to start with the Photography Workspace. So when I go to that, you'll see that on the right-hand panel, a lot of things have changed over there. Um, the tools change slightly, and even keyboard shortcuts may have changed as well. But the cool thing about Photoshop is you don't have to be pigeonholed into using one of these built-in workspaces. You could create your own. For example, I use the photography workspace to get close to what I want, and then I modify it to my liking. And this is what I suggest you do too. Go up to Window down to workspace and pick one of these which is close to what you want to use then you could modify it to your liking now in this case um, for example I have libraries and adjustments up here at the top I do like that I just um, want adjustments over to the left so I'm gonna move that because I like that to be the first tab and I want this to be further up like that now if I wanted to, I could pull adjustments right off, right? So I could have my workspace and have adjustments float if I prefer. If I want to put it back, I could just drag it back over there and you'll see a blue box will appear where it's going to go and then just let go and it, it goes back there. So I could move it over. So you could do that to any of these tabs. If I want the Navigator tab out, I could do that. If I want to get rid of the Navigator, Gator tab altogether, you can see there's a little X in the corner there. I could get rid of it, but I'm not going to. I like to have the navigator there. So I like that, and I do like layers, channels, paths there in that order. So all that is fine. Now, going along the left hand side, uh, we have the history panel, and I like that. I'm going to keep that there. Actions, I want that. Here we have properties, and I do want that. And here we have info. This is just file info. I do want that. Here is Clone Stamp Source, or the source for the clone tool. So if I click on that, you can see that there's a lot of things you could do with the clone tool to modify its default, the way it default operates. Um, I do use that, so I'm going to leave that there. But there are other things that I want here as well. So to add them here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to Window, and if you see down here, there's these different things that you could add. For example, I want uh, brushes there. And you could see that it added brushes and brush settings. So it added both of those. They're tabbed together. And so they're right there. I could move them if I wanted them down here, let's say, or if I wanted them to float. Again, I could have them float, but I don't want that. I want them there. So I want them to below clone source. I'm going to go back up to window. So what you could do is if you're not sure of what something is, for example, if you don't know what glyphs is, just click on it and add it. And you could see these are glyphs. Now, if you don't want it here, just pull it off and then hit that little X and you'll get rid of it. Or you could just go back up to window and just remove the check mark next to it and it will remove it. Now, 
uh, going through, um, I want character because on my thumbnails for my videos, I'm often putting text on there. So I like to have um, the you know character tool there along with paragraph. It comes with it. So I leak and I like it right there. So I'm going to go through and you could just, as I mentioned, you could just go through and add anything you want. The only other thing I want, if I could find it, is um, gradients, I believe, right there. So I want that there. Actually, I want that at the bottom. So I'm going to move it. And the other thing I want, if I could remember shapes, I'm often putting arrows on my thumbnails and things like that. See these arrows up here? So I'm often doing that, and I like shapes at the very bottom. So I have that set up the way I want it. Uh, again, I could rearrange things. I could make windows float and so on. Now, the other thing you could do customize to your workspace are your tools over here on the left. You could control where these, where these are and whether they're grouped together because many of them are grouped together. For example, the selection tools here are all grouped together. Maybe you don't want them grouped together. Well, you can control that. To do that, you go up to Edit and then down to Toolbar. And you can see that the tools are here. And um, those of you that might have been using Photoshop for a while know that the Spot Healing Brush, the Healing Brush tool, and the Patch tool used to be all grouped together. Then, for some reason, they decided to ungroup them. If you wanted them grouped, just grab one and just pull it up to another one, and then you could group those together like that. So let's just say I wanted those grouped together. You could see then uh, over here on the left-hand side, they're all grouped together in here. They're not separated anymore. But to tell you the truth, I don't really like them grouped together. I like them separated. So we'll separate them. Uh, but you could go through and do anything. Um, rearrange these. Just drag them. Drag and drop where you want them. So if you don't want the Move tool at the very top, you want it somewhere else, just move it um, around. So you could do all that, move things around if you find that you need to. Um, overall, I like it the way it is. There's other tools here that you could add to the toolbar. So if you often use the frame tool, the rectangle tool, or the ellipse tool, you could add them uh, there. But I like them the way they are. I like this. I like all these boxes uh, checked down here. So I'm showing all these different um, tools down here at the bottom. So I want those all checked. So I like it the way it is, uh, really. I don't need to change anything. I like it the way it is. Um, and when you're ready with, when you're set with that, just click done. The other thing you could do to your workspace is you could customize keyboard shortcuts. So if you have a specific keyboard shortcut that you kind of made up, you could have it um, selective, or you could have it dedicated to your workspace. So your specific workspace. There is actually, I think, only one keyboard shortcut that I kind of invented. If I go up to Layer, down to Flatten Image, by default, there isn't a keyboard shortcut for Flatten Image, but I created one on my Mac. It's um, Option Command F. So I, I created that. So to get to that, to your own keyboard shortcuts, again, you go up to Edit. And then you're going to go down to keyboard shortcuts. Then from here, it's a little confusing, but you could see here are the menu headings up here. So what we need to do is we need to go to layer, let's say, and then I got to scroll to, down to the bottom of layer and find flatten image. See right here, and I added this option plus command plus F. So you could add that, click accept, and then that is a keyboard shortcut that you created. You could also change keyboard shortcuts if you, like maybe use another application that uses a specific keyboard shortcut that you're used to using for something, like grouping layers or something, and you just want to change Photoshop to match that other application, you could do that as well. Once you're satisfied with your keyboard shortcuts, you could click OK. I'm going to click cancel. But all right, so we've modified our toolbar to be what we want it to be. We've modified our keyboard shortcuts. We modified everything over here on the right hand panel to be the way we want it to be. Now we could save this as our own customized workspace. To do that, go up to Window, 
over to workspace and then click on new workspace and i'm it comes with untitled one we're gonna i'm just gonna give it my name right i could call it anthony's workspace all right and then what do you want to include in your workspace your keyboard shortcuts yes your menus yes your toolbar yes because we modified toolbar and keyboard shortcuts and we're ready to go just click save okay now that is there not only is it up here on window workspace you could see that um at the very top anthony's workspace it's over here on the far right anthony's workspace so if i'm in essentials all of a sudden or something like that or i just screw up my workspace for whatever reason and i want to go back to my workspace i just click on anthony's workspace and there it is so really consider modifying your workspace in photoshop because it really will go a long way to help you work in photoshop as effectively and efficiently as you can thank you everyone who watches my videos i really do appreciate it i'll talk to you guys soon <music>